You shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. Yes, by the grace of God. Good morning to you there. And I believe you are good this morning. Hallelujah. <clears throat> we are sharing truth this morning on beyond all doubts. And this is coming from Genesis 22, 1 through 19. By the grace of God. You are warmly welcome to the Really, Really Knowing God channel. I am Pastor Larry Adenekon. This channel is all packed together to inform and inspire you into a rich knowledge of the very real God that we serve. And everything is being powered by the Pastor Larry Adenekon Center for Education, the place. This is the Daily Gem Devotional, making you a gem to your generation and a gemstone upon the crown of our Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. <clears throat> now, if you are fed up with sense knowledge and now you really desire revelation knowledge, you are on the right channel. Let us pray. Our Father and our God, we bless you this morning. We give you glory and praise Almighty God. Thank you, thank you, and thank you. The Bible says that when we enter your word, it brings light, it brings understanding. Lord, as we do that this morning, let it happen so for both myself and your people. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Yes, Genesis 22. Now it came to pass after these things that God tested Abraham and said to him, Abraham, he said, here I am. Then he said, Take now your son, your only Isaac, whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah, and offer him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains of which I shall tell you. And Abraham rose early in the morning and saddled his donkey and took two of his young men with him and Isaac his son, and he split wood for the burnt offering and arose and went to the place of which God had told him. And on the third day Abraham lifted his eyes and saw the place afar off. And Abraham said to his young men, Stay here with the donkey. The lad and I will go yonder and worship and we will come back to you. So Abraham took wood took wood of the burnt offering and laid it on Isaac his son, took the fire in his hand and a knife and two of them went together. But Isaac spoke to Abraham his father and said, My father, he said, Here I am my son. Then he said, Look, the fire and the wood, but where is the lamb for the offering? And Abraham said, My son. My God will provide for himself a lamb for the burnt offering. So the two of them went together. They came to the place of which um, God had told him and Abraham built an altar and placed the wood on the order, bound his son Isaac and laid him upon the, upon the wood. And Abraham stretched out his hand and took the knife to slay his son. But the angel of the Lord called him from heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham, he said, here I am. And he said, do not lay your hand upon the lad. Do not anything to him. I know that you fear God since you have not withheld your son, your only son, from me. Then Abraham lifted his eyes and looked, and there behind him was a ram caught in the thicket by his sons. Abraham went and took the ram and offered it for a burnt offering, said of his son. And God called Abraham. And Abraham called the name of the place the Lord will provide, as he said, as it is to this day, and the mount of the Lord shall be provided. And the angel of the Lord called Abraham second time out of heaven and said, By myself have I son, says the Lord, because you have done this thing and I have not withheld your son, your only son. Blessing will I bless you. Multiplying I will multiply your descendants as the stars of heaven and as the sign which is on the seashore. At the same time, shall possess the gates of their enemies in your seed. All the nations of the earth shall be blessed because you have obeyed my voice. So Abraham returned to his young men and rose and went together to Beersheba. And Abraham died to Beersheba. We have taken so much time out of our time to read this very, very long passage. But let's do the bit we can do about it. And then we'll continue from where we stopped the other time. But it was good to read the whole thing so that we can get an understanding. Since at this time, God's... Um, tried Abraham and to, to see what he was going to do. God will always know what you are going to do, but you see at times, he says, let's, let's practicalize it, let's prove it, let there be a receipt. That's what we call it now on social media. Let there be a receipt, let there be a clear evidence. Even though I know this man, let, it, let him prove it to everybody. Okay, take your son, your only son Isaac. He, he emphasized it. Even though remember that he had Ishmael, who had now been you know, asked to go with his mother. Your only son Isaac, whom you love, very, very emphatic. And then go to the land of Moriah and offer him there as a bunch of one of the mountains I will show you. As usual, Abraham was used 
to this now. God says, go into this direction. I will show you exactly the point. But for, for now, begin to go. So, the Bible says Abraham rose early in the morning. I can imagine hardly did he sleep throughout the night. <laughs> you know, probably was just praying throughout the night and tossing on his bed and saying, look, um, this is a very, very strange thing. But you see, he had done some work of faith inside himself. He had... Um, done some thinking you know and the bible teaches us in the book of hebrews chapter 11 it says abraham as far as he was concerned god was going to raise the boy back that was it so he was ready to go and then he moved and then on the third day they traveled for, for quite a while can you imagine all the time we were traveling the devil was saying all kinds of things to him and he kept on saying god will raise this boy because he was the one who said this boy is the child of promise he was the one who gave me this boy when I thought that I couldn't, I couldn't have any child anymore. Therefore, it implies God was going to raise him because God is able to raise him. <laughs> Hallelujah. So, whatever the devil was saying to him, I could imagine him also countering the devil as they were going along. And then he got to a place, um, um, he told the, his servants, he said, okay, you stay here. That's uh, verse 5. It says, you stay here with the donkey. The, the, the young boy and I will go yonder, worship, and return to you. That's a statement of faith. Because he believed absolutely that even if I slaughter this boy, we will be back. And he told his, uh, his servants, we are going to worship, and we will come back to you. He, he was very sure of God. Hallelujah. So, took the wood, and then they went on. And as they went on, the boy also said, Father, Look at the fire, look at the wood. Where is the lamb for the burnt offering? Abraham again answered him, God will provide himself a lamb for the burnt offering. Amazing statement of faith again. Somebody who is uh, working with God and who was doing his things uh, in faith. May God help us in Jesus' mighty name. You know, first of all, he said to the servants, we are going to worship and he will return. Then he said to the boy, God will provide himself a lamb for the sacrifice you know now as the story went on he made attempt to kill the boy and then he had um, uh, amazingly the boy too trusted his father never we don't have any records that he was complaining he was the father what are you doing and then maybe push the old man aside and, and this man was over a hundred he didn't do anything like pushing the man aside and you know uh taking to his heels we didn't have any such record Maybe son of Abraham. <laughs> Hallelujah. So he just allowed the father to go on. And then the angel called out and said, Do not lay your hands on that, but I know that you you truly uh, love God and you are ready. And then the angel never said, uh, Look around. Abraham was the one that looked around and he saw a ram that was caught in a ticket. ticket. And then he, um, uh, he, he, um, went on to do the sacrifice but not something there abraham said god will provide himself a lamb for the sacrifice but what was seen it was a ram that was seen and that's why jesus was able to say in the new testament your father abraham rejoiced to see my day because that was the lamb Abraham spoke about at the beginning when he told his son, God shall provide himself a lamb for the sacrifice. But this was a ram that was that was caught in the woods, in, in the thicket, you know. And so when he saw the finally the lamb of God, he was excited where he where he is in heaven. And Jesus said, Your father Abraham rejoiced to see my day. That lamb that he spoke about. God remains faithful. Even after Abraham had, had gone for many, many years, the lamb Abraham spoke of still came at the end of the day. And then he went on to name the place uh, Jehovah Jireh or the Lord will provide and all. And well, let's just round this off here. The other thing that we, we could see here was the way God got excited. You know, he got so excited. He said, look, in this thing that you have done, I, I, you know, I, I, in multiplying, I will multiply you. In blessing, I will bless you. You want to know what, what I think of that? God was speaking wrong English. You know, and that's what happens to you when you are excited. You are overly excited. God was excited. The Bible says that he has a soul. He feels happy too. He feels sad too. He gets excited too, you know, and he got really excited here. Yeah. Abraham has proven him right at the end of the day. He has given a receipt. Nobody can doubt what Abraham can do or the kind of person he is or the kind of relationship that he had with God and all the prom a number of promises followed it that we all know. Uh, may God help us all. What a beautiful story. I, I never, I never cease to look at this story because it's, it just tells me the kind of person God is. Gets excited when you, when you, when you, get stuff done. God bless you. I wish you a wonderful day and I pray that the Spirit of God will inspire you into great things like that or of that type. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. <music>